Well, you know, with the powered parachute that we just looked at, the Airwolf, I know that to have a, a big, giant kind of wing above us. The aircraft we're looking at now that you also represent got almost no wing up there. In fact, it's a auto gyro, or many people just call them a, a gyrocopter, gyroplane. A lot of names that kind of apply to the same thing. You're now representing this one, Galen. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we became involved with the gyroplanes. We were looking for another market to uh, fill our need to manufacture other planes, but we found in Germany one of the best manufacturers of gyroplanes, which is Auto Gyro. So we became a distributor in the Great Lakes region for the gyroplanes. And uh, totally different world from the powered parachutes to the gyroplanes, because gyroplanes you can fly in really windy and, and powered parachutes are weather limited. You gotta watch your time a little bit in a powered parachute. You go up, but there's a lot of nice days, a lot of hours you can fly. But you have limitations in that that you just don't have in this. Yep. So basically, like this is rotor craft so your, your rotating rotor is your wing so wind is in these is not a factor we can fly in winds as high as they're rated up to 50 mile an hour winds so <laughs> you know we've more than fixed maybe not in that i haven't seen but i've seen them out here flying at sebring in some winds that they're the only ones flying and they look like they're having no challenge there in fact i'd rather fly with a 20 mile an hour wind than zero it's just more fun so you're now you're I know you as a power parachute flying expert, but you what did you have to go through to get used to flying this? Uh, I've been a fixed wing pilot all my life, so it flies more like a Cessna 150 I would relate it to than anything else. It flies more like a fixed wing than a rotor craft because I flew helicopters too. So. Ah, you did. So you've got experience yeah. with collectives and all exactly. that. Exactly. And this doesn't this, have that. that no, no torque. So you kind of do what you think you would do in a fixed wing. Exactly. And it sort of works out even though the wing is anything but yeah. fixed. Yeah, you don't even realize that it, you have a rotating wing. It just fly like a fixed wing and that's how it flies. Other than your takeoff, you pre-rotate to take off speed and you've then after that. You've got the pre-rotator mechanism up there. Is that you can the up there at the top. So, so you basically, you get it spinning first and then your roll is much shorter. And then it's the air going through the rotor which keeps it spinning. Sure. Driven by the engine in the back. The rotor yeah. is not driving the process. But unlike what people think, if you lose your engine, you're a glider. So you simply can glide down and land without an engine. So a little less exciting than losing an engine in a helicopter. Yes. Which you had to you're practice already, if you're a helicopter correct. pilot. An auto rotation in a helicopter, you're transitioning from powered flight to non-powered. So the angle of attack on your blades have to go to this basically angle of attack, which is your glide, ah, see, okay. which go is to three to five all degrees. And this is at that all the time. So you're always in auto rotation mode. Cool. Guys, you got to set up floats on this camera. Yeah, one of the things that distinguishes this, these aren't giant wheels, these are floats. And yep. we don't think of gyroplanes or gyrocopters on floats, but why not? So how does this work? So Roy Hannon is the owner of this plane, and he's the first one in the United States. Is it? Floats. Okay. Yeah. That's why we've not seen one then. Yep. Has he flown it on, on the water oh, yet? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And this is the amphibious too, so you can land on land or take off, land on water. So it adds yeah, so a little he's got weight. The whole spray shield, or that's what I would call it anyway, to keep water that comes off the floats from getting into the prop because. A lot of float planes have the engine in the front. They don't all by any means, but and they do that to avoid exactly that problem. So that's what that does for you. Right. So basically adding the floats adds weight, so it decreases your payload capacity, but gives you options to land and take off on water. And it decreases your airspeed by about 20 miles per hour. But now, it's a I can't fun imagine plane. this has the payload of the Airwolf. No. I, I doubt that. But it does carry quite a load, doesn't it? Yeah, this is just a little over 400 pounds with the floats. Yeah. Okay, so once again. 550 pounds without floats. Well, that, that's still pretty good numbers, though. That's still a couple of big guys could go yeah. aloft and have a, have, a, have, a, have a ball in these things. They're a different kind of flying. Okay, so we got some good information. You represent the. Uh, the Great, Lakes Lakes the Great Lakes region of the U.S. for this aircraft. Once again, give us the website where we can come and get some more information, Galen. So it'd be www.soaringconceptsaerospace.com. Okay, we'll put that on the screen for you as well. Talking to Galen Geigley, and I got it right this time, <laughs> uh, here at uh, Sebring Expo. And thanks so much for watching us today. My name is Dan Johnson. I've got information about gyros, about powered parachutes, Power Shoot the company on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.